Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Stephen Inks. And in today's video, we are looking at a pen that is a record-breaking price point for me. I've once again delved into the world of gold-nibbed pens. And the reason why I've chosen the pen that I'm choosing today is um, in my research about the sorts of pens that people buy and do not regret. Um, this one, along with the Twisby Eco, was one of the pens that came up the most. So I decided to treat myself to it, and I am here to share with you my thoughts and opinions and uh, give you a sample of how it works. And the pen comes in an iconic box that I'm going to show you right there. And I'm sure you guessed what it is based on the Lamy on the front and the fanciness of the box. It is the Lamy 2000. So I'm going to do um, an unboxing and I'm going to look at the parts and features. And then I'm also going to do a drawing sample and tell you what I think. Another thing that I'm trying out um, in this video that I have not done before was that I ordered from uh, the Goulet Pen Company, um, which is you know a favorite for a lot of people in the fountain pen community. So I wanted to check out what they're all about. So I'm gonna give my thoughts and impressions about that as well. Stay tuned. All right, going with the full unboxing today, I ordered this pen, as you can see, from the Goulet Pen Company. This was my first order from them and a couple of reasons why I wanted to do that. Number one, just wanting to support uh, a company full of people who love pens, just like me. Um, and I've wanted to do that for a while. Normally I order through Amazon, um, but I also noticed for this particular pen, the Lamy 2000, some of the negative reviews that I found on Amazon had accused the vendors on Amazon of sending um, a knockoff that looked like the Lamy 2000 but wasn't. And I noticed when the price of the Lamy 2000 went up about six, four to six months ago, none of the Amazon vendors that I normally buy from, their prices did not go up. So that was kind of suspicious. And um, anyway, just wanted to try out the experience, which was a great experience, by the way. Um, their shipping is fantastic. This has arrived in a much more together um, status than some of the stuff I order on Amazon. Sometimes it just comes in an envelope. Um, and... Additionally, uh, they, uh, the, the Goulet Pen Company sent me a lot of notifications, like first when my order was shipped, um, they sent a notification when it was out for delivery, and they also sent a notification when it was delivered to my email. So that's a lot, that's really cool. If you're the kind of person who gets impatient when you've ordered a new pen, just like me, you might wanna give these guys a try. I definitely would love to order from them again in the future. Um, so let me open this up. Oh yeah, it also came a lot faster than I expected, a lot faster than Amazon shipping has been doing lately, uh, using the priority mail from the USPS. So I'm excited about that. Came in a box, again, packaging, super secure. Um, I feel very excited about how um, this was sent to me. I feel like the person who sent it took great care and was very concerned about me receiving my product uh, in a perfect, um, just how it was supposed to be sent to me. You know, getting a, something that's working, not damaged, uh, secure, that sort of thing. So here we go, opening up the box. All right, bubble wrap, again, safe and secure. Uh, inside there's also some um, ink samples that I'm very excited about, but we will be reviewing it another time. Ooh, I got a lollipop. Um, so we'll, we'll look at that at another time. I got a sticker. How exciting. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Um, comes with a note. I packed your order with a slightly ridiculous amount of care. I agree. To make sure that the writing products you love would arrive safely today, I'd love to hear what you're thinking. And they give a, um, a website where you can do that. And it looks like this is written by hand for the person who um, packaged it. Very nice. And a note as well. Um, this looks printed. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a little, I, I will read that at another time. 
got a packaging slip. So once again, making sure that everything that I ordered arrived exactly how I expected it. That's something I love to report. Excellent customer service. Okay, little cardboard sleeve, I'm assuming for protection. And here's the box that it comes in. Very exciting, moving some stuff out of the way. So it's a cardboard box. Um, there's a raised, I think this is plastic, Lamy on the side. It's a very sweet looking box. It's got some indentures on the front here, um, obviously by design. And it says 2000 fountain pen black extra fine, which is what I ordered. Let's open it up. Okay. Oh, this is actually, this is on the underside and there's an, a window where that comes through. Very cool. It doesn't appear to be magnetic or anything. Uh, the box isn't um, super well constructed. Some of the boxes I've had in the past, I actually plan on keeping them. I don't know how I feel about this one yet, but it's a very minimalist design and the Lamy uh, Safari that I got also came with a minimalist design. In Germany, seems like they are very concerned about the environment as well. And so everything looks very minimal. Um, warranty information. Very good, an uh, address for repairs. I'll hold on to that. And then this looks like a guide for how to use all their different pens. Be pretty effective as an advertisement as well, because now I want all these pens. Here's the one for Lamy 2000, it's a piston filler. Uh, looks good, okay. And now the piece de resistance, or however you would say that in German, the Lamy 2000, pulling out of its plastic sleeve now. Wow, okay, this is, there's a pretty well constructed box for something that's kind of minimalist and cardboard. Um, but we'll, we'll take a look at this pen. Okay, it feels kind of cool to the touch and it's got a nice texture. It definitely feels solid. It does not feel cheap at all. And the clip is spring loaded. So that's not um, the metal flexing. It's not a flexible metal. It's got a little spring loaded area right there. So very nice, very secure looking. Um, here's where the, the piston opens up and pull the cap off to reveal this uh, stainless steel, brushed stainless steel um, area right behind the nib. And here's the Lamy 2000, extra fine nib. Get a little load of that. This is a gold nib um, and uh, looks fantastic. This is filled by opening up the piston which pushes down on the inside. And then when you've lift, submerged into the ink, you twist it again until it all but disappears. Okay, feels, it has a nice weight to it. Not too heavy, but um, it doesn't feel like you got nothing in your hand. And it does post very securely. I think that this is something that I will enjoy writing with posted. I'm not going to do the uh, disassembly because I'm just too excited and I'm ready to start playing with my pen. All right. Having thought about it, uh, I've had some small bottles in my videos for the last couple of weeks. A lot of small bottles that don't quite fit the pen, so I'm not going to do that with this extra special pen. I decided to go with a classic, something I really like. This is Noodler's Walnut. It's kind of a dark, um, almost sepia tone brown. Um, it'll look lovely with this pen. Uh, what this is, as far as the filling mechanism for this Lamy 2000, it is a piston filler. Um, it gets a lot of criticism in that you can't really see the ink window very well. If you look carefully, you can see the piston go down into it. It is translucent. There it goes. So you can see it, but you really won't know that you're out of ink until you're almost completely 
out of ink. So just one quick turn of the piston. And one thing I really have appreciated and enjoyed about this pen is once that piston is turned, see we got some brown to clean up there. Um, I'm gonna clean off this. It um, really, sort of the piston, the, uh, the blind cap, which is the part of the, the piston that turns in the back, it really feels seamless. Like I can barely feel it when my fingers pull over there. Um, I noticed also once when I was using this before, the first time I just kind of was testing it out, I accidentally had this blind cap a little bit loose and you can see it can get loose kind of easy and that increased the flow of the pen a lot. So a good tip if you want to get those finer lines, something a little more control, you want to make sure that piston is nice and tight. All right, I am ready to start playing with this pen. We're going to focus. There it is. Bit of a surprise for you guys while I do my practice lines. I thought this fancy pen would be a perfect time to introduce a brand new sketchbook. This is the Render Sketchbook. Um, this came highly recommended for fountain pens for um, all purpose. It says down here, use with all media. We shall see. Um, but uh, this came highly recommended in forums and things, so I wanted to check out something new. And uh, I did mention when I did my Tomoe River sketchbook that I'm trying to use up all my sketchbooks, but I've only got a couple pages left in that one. Um, so, you know, uh, close enough. Let's get this open and have a look at the paper. Um, I'm very interested to see if I can get it open. Uh, no, I'm very interested to see how the paper is and um, if it really has a nice smooth paper-like texture. Um, I still do like Tomoe River, but there's a couple of things that have been a little frustrating lately using it. Things like um, the slickness of the paper, um, how it takes pencil, which is another issue um, because pencil doesn't erase very easily from Tomoe River and I do use pencils in my art. So you know that. So it says here in the book, no show through paper. Competitor's paper. Ooh, I wonder who that could be. Flip it over and the ink is completely saturated through the paper on the next two pages. Ooh, dramatic. No show through. Well, we shall see if that is true. We're going to put some ink on these pages. All right. Okay, so this definitely has a very a, a textured feel that's uh, very much paper-like. Kind of the thing I've been missing from the Tomoe River. It feels thick. And um, yeah, if this really is no show through, it's a very nice texture. It doesn't feel unnatural in any way. It's got a nice smooth texture, um, which is good for fountain pens because too rough of a texture. Some of you may have tried um, using a fountain pen with um, what's called, uh, oh, I can't think of the word. Uh, what's called, oh, uh, the, the rough textured watercolor paper, um, cold press paper. And that probably didn't go very well. I personally had a bad experience with that because um, the texture can cause blobs of ink and burping and things like that. So a nice smooth texture is really good for fountain pens. Let's test out this Lamy 2000 Noodler Walnut, Noodler's Walnut Ink. And um, this is the render sketchbook. So we're going to start with a few, a few little lines. So yeah, this is definitely a Western extra fine. I hardly feel that extra fine is the appropriate um, tile for this pen because um, it would imply that this is 
another level of fine. And it's actually, these are some pretty thick lines, if you're looking at that. Um, and it's very wet. Very wet. Something that I noticed about this. Um, if I were to do some hatching, let's do some quick hatches. Definitely saturates the paper, if you look at that. Um, I'm gonna do a big, dark blob of ink right here, just testing this render sketchbook and see if I can put so much ink on this that it shows through to the other side. If not, I will be very impressed. And you can see this being a wet writer, one of the advantages here is that you can really just pour on the ink. Um, if you wanted to do some, some fills of ink that don't have any gaps in it, like how these um, hatch marks have gaps in it, you could do that. You could definitely have some very dark values with uh, high contrast in your shadow shapes with a pen like this. It would be harder to do on something like, say the Pilot Kakuno or the um, Platinum 3776, which are two pens that I really love for their own unique qualities. But being able to put down lots of ink is not one of them. So you notice I kind of did a random scribbling here so you can see these uh, blotches, this is shading quality of the ink. It's very, um, it's got some, some subtlety to how the colors lay down. One of the things I really like about fountain pen art. So on the other side, no show through. Look at that. That's pretty good. I wonder what would happen if I were to put on the other side of this ink blot, another thick one. Will we see a breakdown in the paper? I definitely see the part where it's getting soaked in the center. It could be a little bit of a buckle or a warp, but in but actually it doesn't feel like it's doing it that much. So that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, quite impressed with this. So what shall we do? We're gonna do a little more. We're gonna do some forward writing. Okay, like I said, it's um, it's quite thick. For an extra fine, I would expect this for a fine or maybe even a medium, um, like a Japanese medium, but uh, definitely this feels like a, even a Western fine, not extra fine. The reverse, this is kind of more what I expected. It is scratchy, but it does seem to give you some reverse lines, very scratchy. I would be worried about most papers on this level of scratchiness. As a matter of fact, I think you can see some of these particles of this paper have kind of come up. All right. And another thing, um, again, that just wanting to test is well, this is more the paper than the pen, but um, how fast does it dry? So after about 10 seconds, we've still got a bit of smudging there. Let's see, does it dry at 20 seconds? Um, the paper itself, okay, at about 20 seconds, it's dry enough that it doesn't smudge. That's good news for me and all you fellow left-handers out there. If you um, are looking for paper that's gonna be relatively resistant to smudging, you know, it's still possible to do so. This is not bad. All right. What kind of art advice should I give today? I'll say this, and I have to remind myself this uh, at the end of many days in my journey as an artist. I'll say it's better to make bad art than to make no art at all. That's just my opinion. Um, don't get too hung up on details. You can make an absolutely silly thing, 
like I'll just make something dumb here. I didn't plan this out. It's a sheep. What's the plural of sheep? I think it's just sheep. I could look that up, but um, you and I both know that I'm not going to. So here's a silly, maybe even dumb little sheep character. And I'm glad that I made it rather than sit around and think about how can I make something that's good? Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just okay. And that's okay. Just enjoy what you're doing. All right, let's make uh, something a little more planned out. So thinking about this pen, the Lamy 2000, an iconic award-winning design pen that hasn't changed uh, since the 70s, I believe, or maybe even the 60s. Um, it's a really important pen in fountain pen history. Um, I've got to say, I'm, I'm a little conflicted as to whether I recommend it for art or not. I love how it looks, I love how it feels, I love the material it's made of, it's fun to hold in my hand, um, and it's again it's iconic, it's a piece of history. At the same time, it has a very wet flow, and um, it definitely, for a gold nib pen, it doesn't have the flexibility of other gold nib pens, like say uh, a Platinum 3776. Um, it is kind of a challenge to draw with. So if you have good paper and you have um, a desire to challenge yourself in making clean lines with good shapes and being kind of minimal in how much line work you do, this pen could really work out for you. I'm not sorry that I bought it, but it's definitely, uh, again, like I said, a challenge to use as an art tool. I'll find that I'll most likely use it as a, a tool for journaling, for writing, um, and it will be hard to use on cheap paper. You'll notice even at the end of um, watching this drawing sample, I give you a zoom in, a close up of what's there. And you're going to see some feathering and bleeding on this paper, which is no show through. And it definitely did not show through, but I still had some bleeding um, and feathering that, I mean, I managed to get the drawing done all right, but at the same time, um, I would rather have seen this drawing turn out completely without those little kind of ugly artifacts. But I hope you enjoy the drawing. Uh, it's based on a conversation I had with my coworkers about returning to in-person instruction in a hybrid model as a teacher. Um, it's very challenging. It has been a long week and I could use some more coffee. All right, I hope you're all getting what you need these days. about this notebook, the render sketchbook. Um, honestly, having used it for a little bit, uh, I, I get the impression that the paper is really only that no show through because it's so thick. I haven't tried it with anything else like um, markers, which I don't really use at all, or um, uh, paints, but I doubt that this is something that would take well to paints. But in the end of the day, the thing that I'm kind of wondering is what's the difference between this and this 
which is my old sketchbook I started this channel on that was really cheap paper. Um, do you like my sticker, by the way? I'm pretty proud of it. Anyway, um, and this didn't show through to the other side too. You can see some perspective studies that I was doing. And you can really see that it, it, it really, even with really thick pens, um, it didn't show through. And I gotta say, I mean, the, the main difference between these two sketchbooks, besides the fact that this one is much larger, uh, is that this one cost like three to four times as much. This is, um, by the way, the illustrious artist loft brand that they sell at Michael's for five to 10 bucks, depending on if it's on sale. So it's really hard for me to recommend this because I, I appreciate the effort with the thicker paper, but it really doesn't feel all that different from this, which is cheap paper that's just thick. So those are my thoughts there. All right, we're back. And um, having played around with this Lamy 2000 fountain pen, I, I've, as I said before, I'm a little mixed in recommending it. First of all, I love it. I do not regret purchasing it at all. It feels so cool to hold in the hand. The uh, pen, when it comes off, has a really satisfying sound, as well as when it posts, it's perfectly balanced. The texture feels really nice in the hand. Um, at the same time, there are ways that this is challenging to draw with. Uh, it is very wet. The feed is very wet. I don't feel that it's even technically an extra fine nib just because I feel like that thickness, it's hard to characterize that as extra fine. I know that Western nibs have a broader line than say Japanese nibs, but at the same time, I, I just feel that way after looking at the kind of line that it makes. That being said, it can be used as an art supply. It can be used to make some really great pen and ink art um, just by playing around with it. I've had some fun doing some things. You do have to watch what kind of paper you use and make sure that it works for you. Um, as far as the paper, speaking of which, the render sketchbook left a few things to be desired. To be honest, I can't tell the difference between that paper and the paper in my cheap sketchbook that I used to use before switching over to Tomoe River. Both papers offered um, no see-through on the other side because they were thick enough. Um, but both papers also with wet writers like this Lamy 2000 and some other pens that I own had a little bit of bleeding and feathering. And um, you could see in the close-up of the drawing that I did that there was some bleeding and feathering with this pen. So. I feel as though I can recommend this pen if you know what you're getting into. You know you're getting a wet writer that's very juicy, does not have a lot of line variation, especially for a gold nibbed pen. And there are a lot of other recommendations I could make that are lower in price. Even still, this Lamy 2000 is an exciting pen to have and I'm very glad I have it. So that does it for today's video. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching these videos, for liking and for subscribing. Please continue to do that because that helps me support uh, the channel as I'm trying to build a community here on YouTube. Uh, thank you so much for your kind attention and I will see you in the next video.